Welcome to Dr. Piercy's Adding the Add Use Case to our MVC database example. In this video, we'll review the design diagrams for the Add Use Case. We'll create the Add Use Case components in our Eclipse project. Let's think about what the viewer will see. We have displayed a sitemap. As we saw in the example, the first page is the table with the data from the database. If they click on Add Entry, they had an Add Entry page. When they filled that out and clicked on Add Entry, they went back to the Browse table. If they clicked on Update, they go to an Update Entry page. They make adjustments as necessary, click Update Entry, and they go back to the table view again. Delete, as far as the user is concerned, simply displays the table again, but with one less record than was there before. Here we see the use case for adding a book to the database. When Add Entry is clicked, a request will go to the server, to the Add Form servlet. This will then pass execution on to the Add Form view JSP, which will create the response to send the form back to the client. The user will enter data into the form and click on the Add Entry button. This will send a second request to the Add Servlet, which we'll use to process the Add Entry request. Add Servlet will enlist the aid of a helper class to add the query, called Add Query, to add data to the database, which will use the book class as needed. When the Add Servlet is complete, instead of moving on to a view, it will make a read request, meaning it will try to browse the data again from our previous use case. For the Add Data component, We'll need to create one, two, three, four additional components to handle this use case. This class diagram illustrates a book class that we'll create to correspond to the table in our database. So we'll have a title, an author, and pages as fields. We'll have two overloaded constructors, one that allows us to enter the title, author, and pages, and one that takes no parameters. We'll have getters and setters for each of the instance variables and we'll have a toString method. We'll use this class as needed when we create, read, update, and delete books to our book database. Here we see the IPO table for our add form servlet. Recall that the only reason this exists is to pass control on to the add form.jsp. A request will come in from read.jsp. No input will be provided. We'll simply pass control on to add form.jsp. There'll be no output, and the destination will be to the addform.jsp. The only reason I'm including this in this project is to provide a complete MVC solution for each use case. This is important as I may find some use for this servlet at a future date as I update my project over the years. Here we are in Eclipse, ready to begin adding the add components to our book db example. Notice we already have in our source folder a package for controls which already contains delete servlet and read servlet. A package for db helpers which already contains the delete query and the read query. The model which includes the book class and in web content we have our index.jsp and the read.jsp. In addition, under the Lib folder of WebIMP within our web content, we also have the driver jar file added. So now we're going to add the four components we need to include the add use case to our example. First, we need our add form servlet. Recall from read.jsp that the URL mapping will need to be add to run this servlet. Right-click on controllers. Select New, select Servlet. In our form, the project looks to be good, as does the source folder. The Java package is listed at controllers, which is what we want. And for the class name, let's say Add Form Servlet. Click Next. Note the name is Add Form Servlet. For description, we'll add controller to generate the add a book form. No need for any initialization parameters. For URL mappings, we need to edit our current mapping and change that simply to lowercase add. 
click finish to create the add form servlet. Here we see our add form servlet with the usual suspects. We have both a do get and a do post. Let's make sure both do get and do post are act, but let's put our code in the do post method. To do this, let's put simply do post request comma response. So when a get message is received, it will simply send execution down to do post. Here we simply need to pass execution on to the JSP. The servlet is kind of a placeholder for possible future use. So let's set up a string URL equals slash add form dot JSP. Now we need a request dispatcher. Request dot get request dispatcher and we'll hand it the URL. We need to fix the error by importing request dispatcher from the Javax servlet package. And then for our final line, we need to forward execution on and send along request and response. Pretty simple, eh? This completes the code for our add form servlet. Here's my IPO table for the add form.jsp. Recall from the wireframes that this will provide the form whereby the user can enter the new book information. The source will be the dispatcher pointing to add form.jsp from the add form servlet. No inputs will be provided. We'll simply create an HTML view with a form for all of the book information. The output of this will be the view with the add form and this will go back to the client browser. Next, let's make the JSP that includes the add form. Right click on web content, select new, select JSP file. Note it's going to be located in BookDB example web content. Let's call it add form.jsp and click finish. Let's add a title. Let's call it Sci-Fi Library Add a Book. Let's copy this and make it a visible title as an H1. Now we need a simple form that lets us add the book information. We'll call it Add Form Action. We'll say add book. I will include a method. For now, let's make that get. So note that add book will be the URL mapping for our add servlet when we create that in a few moments. So we're going to add three things in text boxes. Let's add a label. Book title. add a text box, input type equals text, name equals title, value equals null. And finally, we'll go to another line. We need something similar for the book author. And something similar for number of pages. Finally, we need a submit button that will send a request to the next servlet. So when this file is run, we will see a form that allows us to enter the book information, then click on a button to add the book. Here's our input process output table for our add query class. This class is important as it will be called by the add servlet. The add servlet will provide the database name, the database username, and the database password 
In addition, it will provide a book object, which will be used by Add Query to get the information to add to the database. To process this, we'll create a connection. We'll create a prepared statement. We'll then set up the prepared statement with a query and any of the data needed to fill in the query. We'll send this query to the database. Then we'll process the query results, if any. There'll be no output as we go back to the add servlet as the destination. Next, let's create our add query component. Right click on DB helpers, select new, select class. Note the source folder is in book db example, package is db helpers. The name of this should be add query. Leave the modifiers with public. Superclass is object. No interfaces. We'll leave the stubs blank except for inherited abstract methods. And let's generate comments. Click finish. Here we see our add query. We're going to have one field that will be used in several methods, namely a connection object. So public connection and we'll call it connection. Note there's an error, and we need to import connection from java.sql package. Next, let's create our constructor. Type public add query. Here we'll provide three inputs for the constructor. A string with the db name a string uname for the username and a string pwd for the password. We're going to need a URL for the driver so let's create that as a local variable string URL equals JDBC the technology the request is coming from colon MySQL, technology it's going to, the URL for our database server, I'm running it off of localhost from port 3306, and then a slash, then outside of this we'll add the DB name. Next, we need to make sure that the driver is active. Class dot for name. We're going to provide a string that specifies the driver. Com dot my sequel dot jdbc dot big d driver dot new instance. We see an error because we need to surround this with try catches. Let's surround with try multi catch. Now that the driver is connected, we need to use the driver to make our connection. This dot connection equals driver manager dot get connection, and we'll pass it the URL, our username, and the password. Notice this one also has an error because we have an unhandled exception. Let's add the exception to the existing catch clause. Now we see it's been added. That's all we need to do for the constructor. Recall we're going to use this to make our connection, but then we need to use the connection to query the database and add the data. So let's make a new method called doAdd and we'll pass it the book object. Public void do add book book. Notice an error on book means we need to import it. Let's import book from our model. Let's set up a string for our query. For an add we want to use insert into our books table. 
the fields title, author, pages. I do not need to enter in a book ID as my database is set up to auto increment the primary key book ID. Values. Now the values are going to come from the book, but I want to use a prepared statement to insert those into the query so that I'm not vulnerable to SQL injection hack. So let me put some placeholders in the form of the question mark token. Now let's create a prepared statement. Prepared statement ps equals connection dot prepare statement and I'll give it my query. Notice an error. We need to first import our prepared statement from java.sql. A second error because we need to surround with a try catch. Okay, so we've created our query as a prepared statement. Now we need to fill in the blanks. Notice this one has three blanks. Let's start with number one. PS dot, we're going to set a string because the title is a string. We're going to do that with parameter number one. It's the first question mark and the value is going to come from our book dot get title. Again, the first of three question marks, the value is going to be book title. Next, let's do the same thing for author, which is also a string. Get author. Now let's set for the pages, which is an int. So we'll choose set int as the appropriate method that corresponds to the data type. Book.getPages. So at this point, we are now ready to run the query. Since this is a create use case for the query, we're going to use the execute update method, which would return an int. Execute update is used for any create, update, or delete query, anything that changes the database. It would return an int, but we don't need it for anything, so we're just going to leave this as is. Here we see the IPO for our add servlet component. A request will come in from our add form.jsp. Request will provide the title, author, and pages that were entered by the user in the form. Add servlet will get this input data. It will then use it to set up a book object. It will then set up an add query object and pass it the database name, the database username, database password, and the book. We'll use the add query to add the book. When add query is done, control will return to the add servlet and then it will pass control on to the read servlet. Right click on controllers, select new, and select servlet. Note the project, bookdb example, and source file, bookdb slash source, are correct. The Java package is controllers, and that is correct. For the class name, type add servlet. Note the rest of the things on the form are correct, and hit next. Note the name is correct. For the description, controller for adding a new book to the database. Initialization parameters will stay as they are. For the URL mapping, we need to change that. For the URL mapping, we need to change that from add servlet to add book. Click Finish. Here we see the servlet. Again, let's allow both a do get and a do post, but put our code in do post. So in do get, type do post and pass on the request and response. In do post, we need to get the data, set up a book object, set up an add query object, pass the book to add query to add to the database, pass execution control 
to the read circuit. To get the data, these are request parameters from a form. Stuck string title equals request dot get parameter title. Since we're getting a string and leaving it a string, no need to convert. String author equals request dot get parameter author. Finally, int pages equals integer dot parse int and request dot get parameter pages. Next we will set up a book object. Let's go book book equals new book Now let's set title equal to title. Let's set author equal to author. And let's set pages equal to our pages. Now let's set up an add query object. Add query, we'll call it AQ for short, equals new add query. We'll hand it our database name, sci f underscore library. I'll hand it the username for my MySQL installation, which is root. And then I'll hand it a password, which for my ins installation is an empty string. Here's an error. We also need to import add query to the servlet. Next, we need to pass the book to add query and run the do add method. aq dot do add, and we'll hand it the book. Once that is completed, we simply want to see the result in our table, so we'll pass execution on to the read servlet. We next need to pass execution on to the read servlet. So let's make a URL string, and we'll simply call it read. We'll create a request dispatcher. Request dispatcher, I'll call it dispatcher, equals request dot get request dispatcher from my URL. I need to import request dispatcher. Dispatcher dot forward request response. And that should complete our add servlet component. Now we're ready to test our add use case. Right click on book DB example project and build the project. Right click on project again, select run as, run on server, make sure it's Tomcat server, be sure that your MySQL server is actually running. Here we are in our application, read the database, yes the server's running so we can see the database, let's click add a book, here we see the form, looks pretty good, our sci-fi library, add a book, Let's add a title. How about Surface Detail by one of my favorite authors, Ian M. Banks. I have no idea any pages. We'll call it 550. It's probably a little low. And add the book. We look through. Now we see Surface Detail by Ian M. Banks has been added. That concludes what we need to do to add the use case to our DB example. For more information about the concepts that you learned in this video, please visit the references shown here. 
This video was written, narrated, and produced by Dr. Craig A. Piercy. The background music is locally sourced by Jason Farnham from the YouTube Audio Collection. This has been a Piercy production.